Welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed the last video. This one is another one that's kind of pieced together. It is me building the battery box and what it did regarding that. It's not complete. There's missing video, but it's the best I can do. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks a lot for following along. Okay. Well, I've been a busy beaver. Um, it's... Uh, <laughs> I've been here uh, eight hours, uh, so I started recording when I got here, and then I let it record while I was doing work in the front. But uh, the the battery just wouldn't last, and uh, the other battery I have for this thing is uh, toast. So, uh, and it doesn't want to run on the charger and record at the same time. Whatever, uh, I found that out the hard way. <laughs> it just doesn't like it. So, uh, where am I? Well, let me show you. For today, we've got the uh, artificial, the, the electronic compass uh, wired in. Uh, this is just kind of went and be cleaned up when I get a little module put down over here. Um, the standby battery is mounted. I'm trying to figure out how to secure it, and I've just figured, well, I'm just going to run an angle iron here, put a little piece of aluminum angle here to hold it from sliding forward, and torque it down with this and it holds this battery in place. So this is the backup battery for the instrument panel and uh, it only powers the uh, alarm warning lights and system and the um, uh, backup altimeter airspeed VSI uh, and that's it. Uh, I will have a magnetic compass so if the whole system fails I don't have anything including comms I'll still be able to know how high I am, how fast I'm going as far as airspeed is concerned, and if I'm going up or down, and the direction I'm traveling. So it'll get me home. And, uh, um, yeah, you know, I'll show you this right now with, with everything in here. Oh, I also finished the battery box. Squirrel! Let me do that first before I show the other stuff. Um, here we go. Um, the battery box. There's the battery. Cabling is in there. I've got it on a charger right now. Uh, start solenoid. This is the inline fuse from the battery to the starter motor. Uh, so right now I've got it in the open position. I mean, I could close it, nothing would happen, but... Um, and uh, yeah, so it's tied in. Uh, there's one wire left to connect, and that's the uh, single wire that connects to the start button to activate the solenoid. Uh, other than that, it's done. Uh, I just need to put a piano hinge here with a lid and uh, so that I can make this a seat again. And uh, this, the little lid will have a f foam sponge that's going to hold the battery down. So there, that's why there's no hold that tie down. There's, it, it's, it won't slide forward or anything else. It's just to pop up. That'll be the, the, the seat here, which will be fastened down. The lid is what's going to hold the battery in place. So that's done, you know, that's part of the wiring harness and all that. Uh, Two very boring minutes later. Well, cut to another day where I changed my mind about what I'm doing and how I'm doing things. So, follow along. Good day, everyone. Good evening, good morning, whenever you're watching this. Um, another update. Um, you should think it's an update. We'll see. Uh, today we are working on wiring some more, more wiring, even more wiring. <laughs> uh, let me show you what I've um, decided. I've made some changes to my system. Um, for example, uh, as some of you may know, I put the battery here at the back seat to move the CG backwards. Um, the voltage regulator charging circuit was originally going to be mounted back here. I changed my mind and decided to mount it here instead next to the battery. Uh, of course it's not going to be feeding directly into the battery. It will be fed to the instrument panel and then back again to the battery. Um, but looking at this configuration when I put the uh, larger fuel tank in here and create a um, um, uh, 
a holding box up here for tools and what have you because there's little storage there. Um, there's not going to be a lot of space to um, work on that up here. It's going to be kind of cramped and I don't want to put it back there underneath the engine where fuel and oil can drip on the voltage regulator. That to me is a very bad idea. A very bad idea. I don't like to see um, electrical components in a location where there's a high likelihood of fuel dripping on them. Call me silly. You know. Uh, so I decided to move it up here uh, completely out of the way. The only electrically operated items back there will be an electric fuel pump and that's it. The electric fuel pump will be mounted back there and then it will be um, just the wiring connections for the cylinder head temperatures, exhaust gas temperatures, and engine um, interfaces, controls, things. So, yeah. Uh, why is this flashing? Hang on one second, people. Oh, no, it's still recording. Okay. Um, yeah, so the goal today is to finish fastening these down, get this in, get that wired up completely. I need to change my wiring harness a little bit, this part here, because it was wired up for the uh, voltage regulator being back there. Now that it's coming up here, I got to pull a line back. I got to put another line in, uh, maybe, um, that will extend the uh, line for the um, uh, Voltage regulator from the uh, from the um, stator in the engine that generates the AC. That yeah. Okay, so that's the goal today, um, and uh, so follow along with this episode as I uh, continue. I'm still waiting for some parts to arrive. Boy, I tell you, uh, the capacitive fuel sensor probe. Two months. Why? I don't know. It's apparently on its way. And I should have it by mid next week. Thank goodness. And then I can actually, in earnest, work on that fuel tank uh, because there's also the uh, there's a few other parts that are missing. And uh, but I'm going to work on that as well. Hopefully, we'll, once I get the wiring done, I might have enough time today to, to get the fittings in to mount that fuel tank, uh, at least fit it back here. So, so that's the goal. Uh, follow along in this adventure as I uh, continue rebuilding this Challenger 2 uh, and, uh, and fix little issues and make it mine. So, thanks for following along. Let's get to it. As Mike Petty says, back to work. And again, we get to some recordings from another day. Yay! <laughs> that kind of rounds off everything that I've done and uh, closes off the new battery tray. Hope you liked it. Okay, and the final update is the battery box. And, well, there's a little more than a battery back here, isn't it? There's my battery that starts the engine. There's the uh, charge controller that comes from the engine, then goes to the front th panel where I got the charge switch, and then comes back and feeds energy into the battery as well as feeds energy to the rest of the aircraft. So this is the charge controller. This here is a breaker. Now it's rated for 80 amps. It's probably too high. I'm going to get the one that's a little bit smaller. But what this is is if I close this here, it's now active and will send the battery current down this heavy cable through the solenoid to crank the engine over. Engine's been removed right now for, for service, um, but if there's ever a big short circuit, it'll pop that and um, yeah, so you don't start a fire. Because it's heavy gauge cable here. And of course that's the start solenoid. They're all up here and, and, and underneath this plate. which is um, a honeycomb plate here. It's on a hinge, simple piano hinge, that you can see that I riveted in here and put screws and such. And it's very tough. It's non-electrically conductive. I was going to put an aluminum plate, but then if the plate ever flexed, and flexed far enough down to touch this, uh, well, spritzing, sparking, 
for whatever reason, if it got banged down for any reason, that aluminum plate here would have contacted and uh, either here or here or wherever. I didn't want that. And, the, and this is uh, that honeycomb material the, the use in, the, in aircraft construction and I had uh, access to some and uh, so I just cut it the right size and I use this because it doesn't conduct electricity and it's also much, much stronger than aluminum and it's very, very light. So um, yeah, that is what the passenger sits on or what I put my tent gear and everything else on as well and it will not flex and if it does flex down if there's an elephant on here um, it still won't short against the battery that was very important I didn't want that so that's that final little update okay hope you enjoyed yeah I really do hope you enjoyed that uh, please like uh, the the video it really helps the algorithm and other people will be able to start seeing these things and uh, subscribe and comment and uh, thank you very much for watching I appreciate it um, this is uh, an awful lot of work and uh, your comments let me know that um, that it's appreciated as well so thanks again for watching bye bye